Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Council Sessions, where we answer the burning questions throughout the Star Wars galaxy. And on this episode, I've got Star Wars extraordinaire Hannah Burr with me. How are you, Hannah? I'm doing well. How are you? I say that because you are one. I, I really, it's taken a long time outside of my normal group of friends, you know, because we've only known each other a short time to find mm -hmm. somebody really as tuned in to Star Wars as me. It, it's Hopefully that's a compliment because no, no, it's a compliment. I just wasn't <laughs> expecting it. <laughs> I'm a big, huge geek, and I think you uh, you're a big Star Wars geek with the rest of us. So, so uh, you know, with council sessions, uh, welcome. I know you've been on the show before, the normal Inside the Force show, but these are our expanded uh, playlists that we're trying to build on the site. Some some interesting topics. And one we we're going to do today that I know is near and dear to your heart is we're going to talk Clone Wars a little bit. And pretty much on the heels of the announcement that we've uh, all been talking about lately is the announcement of the Bad Batch, which is coming next year. Briefly, what's your feelings about that? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It, just because I feel like they were so interesting. It was that new angle and... Also, just seeing people using their weaknesses for their strength mm, and mm -hmm. a little team of misfits. Absolutely fantastic. Don't know whether it's going to take place during the Clone Wars or after. Be very interesting to see what happens there, but I'm I'm incredibly excited. Yes, I am too. I am too. Uh, totally uh, kind of unexpected for me to, to mm -hmm. hear that it was going to be about that since we've heard so much about Ahsoka and... Possibly a mall, you know. I mean, it's all these things besides the Bad Batch, which is great, though. I, I do love it. I can't wait to see what's happening. So on the heels of that, in the end of the, the, the Clone Wars series, our burning question for this episode is, what will you, down the road, what will you remember the most about the Clone Wars series? So... Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say one aspect that I loved is we saw we saw one of my biggest complaints about the prequels is the whole story of Anakin mm. feels very mm -hmm. jaded. Well, not jaded, a jagged. It feels very rough and sudden yeah. and doesn't really make sense. So this helps bridge that. I also love the addition of Ahsoka. Sure, at first she seems like a really whiny brat, but then she develops, <laughs> into, she develops into this young Padawan who we all love. Um, moments that will stand out are actually a lot of sad moments, let's be honest. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I, and, I, and I don't think it's, no, I know for a fact it's not because it's the most recent thing we've seen. But that duel between Ahsoka and Darth Maul will hands down be yeah. one of the greatest Star Wars fighting scenes we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. stands out. And yep, yeah, that's just the main thing that stands out. And then there are a couple blips here and there. Like we get to see Obi-Wan's romantic side a little yeah. bit, which is nice. It's nice to see a little variation there. Um and then, well, I think that really helps with under you know the, the when you get to the movies. I think that actually helps you understand why Obi Wan. I feel like let that relationship between Padme and Anakin go on mm -hmm. is because he had that feeling, you know, and he knew he just never said anything, you know. Which I think that was pretty cool to see him have that. Oh, absolutely! It just I think overall it just added a bunch of depth. Also, you know, seeing Padme as this, you know, kick butt warrior was really cool too. So, yeah, I, I think that's true. Yeah, across the board, there are a bunch of blips, but major highlight is that lightsaber battle between Ahsoka and Darth Maul. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's, I think it's on the on nine out of ten people you ask, I think it's going to be that Siege of Mandalore, you know that whole arc and specifically that fight, uh, that episode. And I think the episode after that, which is the order 66 was 
I've replayed that scene where Rex is turning on her so many times. It's such a fantastic culmination of these characters, you know? Um, and that is, that is probably what my go-to as well would be the Siege of Mandalore and, and the Maul Ahsoka fight. But as I sit back and I think, as I rewatched a bunch of episodes, you know, leading up to the releases of season seven, and I want to go back and refresh my memory and watch some of these older episodes from the previous seasons. And, and, and actually what I really wanted to do was when, when the bad batch episode arc was announced and it was revealed that they were going to look for echo. He was still alive. I remember thinking, wow, I need to go back and watch what happened to him because I, I vaguely remember. And so I watched that series. I then watched a couple more um, with with Rex and with Gregor and with Jesse and, you know, all these great clones. So I started, I remember thinking as it was concluding, I was like, wow, you know what? I I think what's really opened my eyes in this series is actually the clones. Mm. You know, it's the Clone Wars, but when you think of that, you just think of them as soldiers. You think of that as expendables that are just out there fighting a fight. And I loved Rex's lines to Ahsoka that last scene where he's like, you know, without the, we, we have mixed feelings about it. Us clones, we don't know how to really feel about the war. You know, we're, we're programmed to fight this thing. We're told to follow orders, but, and without it, we know we're not anything, you know, what are we, if we're, there's no war and you really start to get the sense of, as you go back and watch the progression of these guys, that they have their own personalities. And I think, you know, I think the one of the person, I think he gets a lot of credit, but I think he should get more is D Bradley Baker, who voices every single one of these clones. Cause you, when you hear him talk to each other, he's talking to himself, but they, they're clearly unique characters, right? I think that is that is a massive accomplishment on this team, this writing team and the executives over there for this, this series because, of course, we're going to love Obi-Wan. We're going to love Anakin. Mm-hmm. Wall, Ahsoka, you know, as you said, start off rough, but eventually turn into a fantastic, important character. But... In that backdrop, man, you had all these clones. And I think, I don't know, to me, they are kind of what made the series. I mean, if they didn't go off well or didn't cooperate with each other well and it didn't play with each other well, I, it could have been, a, it could end up being a, a rough series to watch, you know, but I think they they really, had, and I they think that's probably 1A for me after the whole Siege of Mandalore, you know. I completely agree. And that's an excellent point. I mean, it goes back to that episode and I don't remember the Jedi that was leading and I don't remember the name of the episode, but it was when the clones were ended up firing against each other. Yes. And I mean, your point just, it, it rings so true from that episode, especially because when we watch it, we fall in love with these characters, but we forget that they are clones and we forget that others could see them as, you know, expendable pieces of war. But that episode reminds us what you said, that each has their own personality, each is their own person. Yes. And uh, that is definitely a major highlight throughout the series. There are so many lovable characters, which is why the series finale was so heartbreaking. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was. uh, I'm trying to look that because I was... I was thinking of the same uh, arc of that we were talking about. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's the arc on, um, it's the arc on Krill. Um, Well, it's, it's, I think, well, it's um, Umbara, uh, Jedi Krill, Jedi Master Krill is who you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That arc, it's on season four, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's, it is one of the best arcs in that series. And you do get a really good sense of, when they start firing each other and they realize it, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking. You can feel it with those guys. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. And that, those, those are really good episodes that just, just show how much they do, even though they're just clones, but they consider themselves family and mm-hmm. brothers. 
Um, and they don't take it lightly that they're put in those bad positions, you know? So, um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think it's, I think in the end, it'll also really end up being a series that contributes a lot to the characters of the movies, you know, episode two and three, I think the, the gap that it, it bridges is, is really, really good. And it's, um, it will be a, uh, I think it'll just be a treasured series for a long time, a treasured Absolutely. series for a long time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, okay. Oh, that's, that's what you're sticking with, huh? That's what I'm sticking with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And hopefully, you know, that's why I'm, that's why I'm excited about the clones, uh, showing up in the bad batch and, um, seeing where those, uh, stories take us with, with them and with, uh, you know, cause Rex is probably going to show up. Uh, you're probably going to have, yeah, you're probably gonna have Gregor and Wolf show up because they're the mm -hmm. ones that show up in rebels, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait. It's going to be very interesting to see what they decide to do with that, but at least we don't say goodbye to these clone characters you know, it, it felt like at the end of the series, it was like, it was very much of a farewell. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, what other, what other story can you fit in there where we're going to get all those lovable characters? Yeah. And, and, like, and we know, and we know from history, I mean, they don't end up, you know, being part of the empire and right. uh, we don't ever see them in the, in the later years. So yeah, they, um, they, we they we know that they end up getting kind of shoved to the side, you know. So, well, fun fan theory. Actually, I saw this floating around on the internet. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that Rex is actually one of the rebel fighters during on the moon of Endor. Yes, I've heard that before too. Yes, I don't. I, I think that's a bit of a stretch, but it's nice to. Well, that was that was uh, Dave Filoni's idea he actually uh because i saw that at one of the celebrations he brought out the artwork for rex and to, to make it look like okay i i thought that's where i saw it but yeah. i didn't want to say it because i didn't yeah. want to be wrong <laughs> no that's right that's right and it never it never became technically it hasn't become canon yet um but I think eventually it will. I think yeah. there, there. I think there will make a connection that he is, and we may find that out with when you know, because um, there's rumors again that he's Rex is going to show up in Mandalorian. Um, so that's I did not hear that rumor. Oh, you haven't heard that what? one? Oh, well, what? you know, because Tamar Morrison, who plays the clone, yeah. you know, he's apparently been cast in. Now, of course, everybody's kind of thinking, is it Boba Fett or is it Rex? Oh. So there's there's questions about that. So there's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I almost wonder if it's going to be Rex because Tamara is older. Older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So probably Rex. He's also a really nice guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. Yeah. I've actually so. met him in person. Oh, super. really? Oh, nice. He's super nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's great. So hopefully that works out and we we they make that connection. Yeah, and, and maybe that is Rex. That would be a great thing in, in Return of the Jedi, you know. So okay, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Stay connected on this channel to keep getting more council sessions as well as our other playlists. We haven't actually we still haven't fully announced all the playlists yet, so uh we'll keep everybody in suspense. Thanks, Hannah, for joining me on this episode. Thank you. You're going to get a lot more of her down the road because there's another series that she's going to be involved in. So thanks, everybody, for watching. May the force be with you.